and welcome to the Dragons A Real Podcast. Today I'm going to be looking at Shadow Dark RPG by Kelsey Dion. Kelsey is the owner and publisher for the Arcane Library and she makes some great content for 5e, some great adventures in there. Um, and Kelsey has been writing Shadow Dark RPG for about two or three years now. It's a fully developed product. Just as she was about to bring us to Kickstarter, the OGL crisis hit, which I think boosted her sales somewhat. But I have to say, once you see this review, you'll see that it's quite um, well deserved. She is a good writer, and this is going to be uh, interesting to have a look at Shadow Dark. So let's crack on. Uh, on the inside cover, we have uh, got some tables and some, a quick cheat sheet on how to play the game, which is always handy. The game is an old school fantasy style game when you're going to be a delvers or crawlers, as they call them in this, and you're uh, exploring ruins, um, dungeons, looking for treasure. So when it comes to characters, uh, characters consist of a few items, a name, an ancestry, a class, a level, XP, alignment, a title, a background, their stats and HP. You can start as a, either a zero level or a first level character. First level characters also get uh, things like a class, uh, more hit points and a talent roll, uh, while zero level characters are a bit more fragile and have less to start with. Um, when it comes to stats, it's the six core D&D stats, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. You roll 3d6 down the line to give you your, your stat, and your modifiers range from minus four to plus four. So there's more chance here of getting some characters with some really poor traits. Uh, one optional rule is if none of the character stats are 14 or higher, you may re-roll a new set of stats. When it comes to ancestries, there are six ancestries, Dwarf, Goblin, Elf, Half-Orc, Halfling and Human. No dark vision in this game, you're going in the Underdark, it's scary. Each of the ancestries has a special ability. So for example, uh, Halflings are stealthy, once per day they can become invisible for three rounds. When it comes to classes, we've got some core classes. We have the Fighter. And it tells you what weapons they can use, the armor they can use, how many hit points they have, and then they have some special abilities. Each of the classes has a talent, and when you level up, you roll 2d6 on the table, and you gain a new talent. Obviously, it's weighted around the 7 to 9 points, and on the extremes are more powerful talents that they can get. Next up, we have the priest class. I'd like that a priest is a lot easier for new players to understand than cleric. Most people know what a priest is um, if they have religion in their town or country. Priests have got access to um, spells and they can also turn the undead. We have the thief class or the rogue that we have in uh, 5e. And finally we have the wizard class uh, which um, is someone that's knowledgeable and can cast spells. There's a list of backgrounds, and a, if your background is applicable, a GM can invoke an advantage for your role. Alignments are cut right, paired right back to either chaotic, lawful, and neutral. Keep it nice and simple. There's a list of deities for the priests to have, a list of titles, and depending on your fighter, uh, your class, and your alignment there are different titles for each of the levels and this only goes up to level 10 uh, because let's face it that's what most people only play to anyway before they start again so keep it nice and easy with 10 levels there's a list of languages some starting gear and armor class uh, armor is 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus any armor you are wearing your standard list of items and your the encumbrance rules are you can carry a number of items equal to your strength stat or 10, which is ever the higher, with most items filling up one gear slot. So nice and simple. Uh, weapons cause an amount of damage between a D4 and a D10, nothing groundbreaking here, and they've got some properties like finesse and versatility. So you can see where the influences of 5e are here, but... Um, Nothing unfamiliar to a D&D &D player. Uh, this 
book is littered with random tables and I love random tables so uh, a big thumbs up for me so we have a list of character names for all the um, different ancestries when it comes to advancements you gain experience points and XP comes from uh, getting treasure or for uh, boons gained during the session and you spend a number of XP equal to 10 times your current level uh, and once you get to the next level you uh, reset your XP back to zero uh, and then at level two for example you would need to get 20 XP to get up to level three at level six you need 60 XP to get up to level seven so nice and simple there's tables for rolling random characters now when it comes to magic magic is dangerous um, unlike a lot of gamers where magic just happens in this you've got to cast a spell by rolling a dice a wizard rolls plus their intelligence modifier a priest is their wisdom modifier and the dc to successfully cast a spell is 10 plus the spells tier so spells in this are not known by levels they're known by tiers and i like this change because for new players you often get well i'm a level two wizard why can't i cast level two spells it's a lot easier to explain you're a level two wizard and cast tier one spells it does it's not so confusing if you succeed on your roll your spell happens if you fail then not only does the spell not occur then you can't cast that spell again until you've had a rest also if you're a wizard and fail the spell you have to roll um, on the wizard miscast table and there's some nasty results on that and there are a number of tables for wizard mishaps depending on what tier spell you are rolling and it can be uh, quite devastating some of the rolls that you make on there so it does make the uh, magic users a lot more interesting to play we have uh, rules for scrolls and wands and these when it comes to spell we have a priest and a wizard spell list and there's six spells per tier these spells are very much like in the old school style of um the duration the range and a, a paragraph or two explaining what the spells mean so the nice and simple spells when it comes to the gameplay uh, section it's your standard d20 system you roll a d20 add your modifier and you're trying to beat a dc if you're advantage you roll two dice if you're disadvantage you roll two dice and take the worst result natural one is a crit fail natural 20 is a crit success there is also something called luck tokens which is like your inspiration and you get your luck tokens for you know, good role playing um, heroicism or just plain coolness and you can cash in your luck token at any time to get a re-roll or you can hand your luck token to a companion to give them a re-roll and it suggests the GM should award two to three luck tokens per session per player it explains for anybody not familiar with the six um, core attributes how to use them and when it comes to DCs, it's been uh, vastly simplified. The normal DC is DC 12, and that should be for most things. If it's easy, it becomes DC 9. If it's hard, it's DC 15. And if it's extreme, it's DC 18. So your four DCs are 9, 12, 15, and 18, with 12 being your common one. Jumps of three keeps it nice and simple. Any contest, uh, contest between players or NPCs, then both of them roll their attributes and the highest wins. Um, one thing that has caught people's attention is the use of light in this game. In most games, when you're keeping a track of torches and lanterns, it can be a painful task. And I know for D&D, there's sort of sheets out there for people marking down their uses. This really simplifies it. A torch lasts for one hour of real game time. So once they've lit the torch, if they start dilling and dallying around in, in the dungeon, the torches are going to burn through so it encourages players to sort of um, keep the pace going because the torches are going to run out uh, there's the normal th turns and rounds and in this game um, very much like icrpg we go around the table from left to right uh, start the game off uh, with who's got initiative and just go around the players come back to the gm so everyone takes their turn movement is abstracted to um range bands up close which is up to five feet near up to 30 feet and fire which is as far as you can see in a scene resting you've got to have an eight hour rest and consume a ration um, to uh, get your hit points back and you've got to rest in a safe place if you're not, uh, not in a safe place then 
of the danger increases and when it comes to random encounters depending on where they are resting uh, if it's a deadly area then the GM may be checking every hour of their rest in an unsafe area it may be three hours of, of their rest in combat it's a standard melee d20 plus strength modifier ranged is d20 plus dex modifier and casting is using your intelligence or wisdom damage comes off your hit points and when you get to zero hit points you fall unconscious and are dying so you roll a d4 add your con modifier and in that number of turns you are dead unless you're healed or stabilized each turn you're not healed or stabilized you get to roll a d20 and an actual 20 you pop up with one hit point there are rules for overland travel downtown with carousing and learning a nice example of play for people that aren't used to rpgs and then we come to the gm section the main thing with the GM section is there, is there is only one rule, and that is the rule that you make the rules. So what's written in the book are guidelines, and if you're not happy with them, change them any way you see fit. Throw them out. Don't use them. Use them. Uh, the, the thing is that everybody enjoys themselves, and you have a pact with your players that everyone is there to have fun. It's based on goodwill, respect, and fellowship. There's advice on adventure hawks, how to use the core rules, how to telegraph danger, to use um, DCs, challenge varieties, um, uh, how to use monsters, how to set the tone of the world, how to attack the light. Um, there's also a different modes of play section and this gives you some things you can do to tweak your game. So for example in blitz mode you can have light timers last 30 minutes instead of an hour. You can have fatality mode when characters die at zero hit points, no death. And there's some different uh, modes you can play around with if you like pulpy games or grinder mode games. How to carry out random encounters. Reaction checks for monsters. How to deal with traps and hazards. How to award XP. And then we come to the random table section. And there's a, as I said before, there's a host of random tables here with what happens, a D100 table, what rumors you may hear, uh, an adventure generator, NPCs, how to generate their ancestry, their age, their alignment, their wealth, their qualities, their occupation, right, how to generate rival uh, NPC parties, NPC names. Then when it comes to um, designing maps, how to um, design a map on tables, other than hex maps, settlement maps, taverns, shops, um, arctic conditions, uh, distal, different districts, caves, tunnels, lots of lots of tables to help the GM. And um, quite often these are handy to use before a game just to give you some inspiration on something to run in your game. And we come to the monster section and monsters are very much in the old style. They have an armor class some hit points, attacks, their movement, their stat modifiers for the six core attributes, their alignment and any special talents. Uh, there's also a table to work out what sort of monsters you should be putting against your characters to make so that it's possibly even more balanced, how to design your own monsters and when we come to the monster section, yeah, it's your standard D&D style monsters. You know, your goblins, your boulets, um, and everything is a step block of three or four lines and one or two paragraphs. So it's you're getting sort of four to five monsters a page, which keeps it nice and simple. Um, no big um, shocks of what we get in the monsters. And with the creation rules, you can port most things in that you may find in other books. Then we get to the treasure section. And this is a big old section on how to generate treasure, um, mundane items, booms. Uh, what sort of attributes magic items should have, magic armor, magic potions. There's just a host of tables here to, to um, for the GM to create their sort of magic items, magic weapons, give them personalities. Uh, just a host of advice here and some example magic items. Then we have the character sheet. And the character sheet on, fits on one side of an A4 or legal document hurrah nice simple character sheet with your six attributes your level your talents your attacks and your gear and that's a big plus from me i like a nice simple character sheet 
uh, how you can join the community. I know they've got an active Discord server um, where you can talk with other like-minded people. Uh, a link to the Arcane Library's YouTube video, and I think they've already added the Ranger and Bard class as part of the Kickstarter, which is on the YouTube channel. So there are other classes out there as well. And at the back pages again are some nice end papers. So all in all, this is a nice fantasy RPG uh, with the old school style, but using modern mechanics, which I think is rather good. So people that are a bit fed up with 5e that want to change, there's a possibility for you here. I know other people that have got a bit fed up with old school essentials want something a bit different. Certainly Shadow Dark is worth a look at. Uh, the random tables are alone are, are worth a book in gold. So yeah, uh, highly recommended for me Shadow Dark. If you play in Foundry VTT, they got a system for that as well. Um, and the lights um, timer is actually a real time timer with the Foundry system. So it tracks everybody's lights in real time, which is nice. I'm sure um, Roll20 will have a system if they don't already have so. So yeah, that's Shadow Dark RPG by Kelsey Dion. A big thumbs up for me. Um, as always, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.